Hello everyone. Today we have Dr. Bhavna, who is an associate professor from the Department of CSA, to share her experiences of being in C in IAC uh, on this Women's Day. Uh, welcome, ma'am. So can Thank you, you. Uh, introduce yourself like a bit? Talk um, about yourself. Yeah, my name is uh, Bhavna Kanakurthi. I've been at IAC since May 2014. Prior to that, I was in the US. I was first. Uh, a PhD student at Boston University and then I spent a few years doing my postdoc at uh, University of California Los Angeles okay so being in India uh, I mean you I don't know if you have experience there are a lot of restrictions that are posed on women right uh, so what does actually freedom mean to you in your case um, that's an interesting question um, so, so first of all, I'm not completely sure uh, if as a woman, I feel particularly curtailed in India. Um, in fact, I think it's one of the nicest places where, uh, uh, you know, to be a woman, to be honest. Um, but, uh, you know, gender stereotypes exist everywhere, right? Um, but that aside, what does freedom mean to me? That's an interesting question. Um, so we're here in this beautiful ISE campus where, uh, you know, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai spent some time. Um, and we all know of him as a legendary scientist uh, who spearheaded our space research program, right? But if I look at his life, there is so much more to him uh, than just being a scientist. He cared very deeply about developmental issues. He was very particular uh, or very passionate, I should say, about bringing in technological innovations to the textile sector. Um, he was instrumental uh, in setting up Indian Institute of uh, Management in Ahmedabad. And this is just a small sample of all of the things that he's done um, for uh, the Indian society. And uh, the one thing that strikes me about him was that he surely should have been a person who didn't impose any boundaries on his mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm you know, fairly sure that he kept his mind barrier free um, I loved it to explore and he retained uh, a childlike curiosity about things around him. And uh, if you ask me, this lack of rigidity um, that um, he espoused, right? For example, I don't think uh, Dr. Sarabhai ever thought of himself as a scientist and said, as a scientist, this is all I should care about. I should focus only on my science and nothing else. Um, and I don't think he was the kind of person who did that, at least from all his accomplishments. And this lack of rigidity, this childlike curiosity, uh, to me, is an example of a free mind. Um, and, uh, you know, this intellectual, you know, curiosity, this intellectual freedom is something that was always there in all of us as children. Over the years, we've just given it up. So yeah. it's simply about going back and rediscovering that aspect of ourselves. Yeah, I think as we grow up, it's like you are afraid to ask questions. Like you fear that if people will think you as dumb. And yeah, or we also cast ourselves into stereotypes that other people, uh, you know, you know, think we should fit, right? Yeah. So that too happens. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, like I have I've read like a few articles which uh, has been given by HBR and it states that even the uh, um, even the uh, Alexa or Siri that has gender biases that itself uh, like what do you say uh, like, like typically assign specific roles to men and women I see okay yeah. so uh, have you faced any of that kind of gender biases because these has been created by humans themselves so have you been have you ever faced such a gender bias or how have you overcome that so uh, i'm i'm very uh, passionate about gender issues and therefore i tend to be very careful before i um, assign the label gender bias to some issue um, for two reasons the first is, um, you know, if I cast, if I paint an overly negative picture about uh, the scientific community, it'll deter future women, generation of women from actually taking up science. Uh, the second issue is when you're confronted with an issue, um, if we focus on gender, um, which it essentially means we're focusing, if it is an issue of gender bias, we're focusing on the other person's prejudice. Hmm. And that's something that we often don't have control over. Yeah. Whereas if we focus on other aspects, it'll be easier to find creative solutions to resolve the issue. 
Um, so I would say gender bias does exist. The way I resolve it is the same as how I would a lot of other issues. I would, um, you know, in, in, it depends it's on a case by case basis. In some cases, just a simple conversation will help clear a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. and, you know, make people understand your point of view or you understand their point of view. Um, if a systemic change is needed, then we need to speak about it at the right forum in the right frequency um, so that those issues get resolved. Um, the other advice for young women out there is to not get demoralized by, you know, specific instances um, of gender bias, which they surely will encounter. Um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, wonderful men out there who want women to succeed mm -hmm. and uh, wonderful women as well. And uh, it's important to stand your ground and fight it out and uh, then become a role model for other women. Um, and that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you think of role models themselves, like who are like very famous, right? So when you search or the people that you know, know about are mostly men, like when you think about it. So what was your motivation to come to science, like to be in a science related field and research? Um, so uh, I, even though, you know, it's possible that your community has more uh, men than women, I think it's, uh, you still can use them as role models as well and it's important that we do that. Uh, but I completely understand that it may be easier to relate to people who are like you and therefore it may be easier for women to relate to female role models. Um, in my particular case, I, uh, you know, chose a career in science because I obviously had an interest in both science and mathematics. Um, and other than that, I actually uh, have always been really fond of learning. And I wanted a career that would allow me to be a student forever. And I think a career in uh, science, like for example, as a professor at IISC, allows me to do precisely that. Um, there was also always a part of me that wanted to contribute to the educational aspects, right? Uh, uh, be an educator. Um, so uh, that's really why I chose to do what I do. But I must add, um, I cannot stand here and pretend that I orchestrated my whole career and I knew that this was exactly what was going to happen. Life has its own way of taking its course and things just, you know, fall into place. And, you know, so I just happened to be here because of various reasons, but I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> nice. So, and also like, how do you balance everything? Like being a researcher in IIC, it's not like a simple job. Like you are under a lot of stress, you have a lot of things to do and then there's come, there come family also. So how do you balance between this, this work and life? Um, a very good question. So I think, you know, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, it becomes uh, much easier if you find a partner in life who views the process of building a life together as a collaboration and not a competition, right? So that's extremely critical. The family support is extremely critical. Um, other than that, uh, you know, uh, especially for women, I would say it is really useful to find a good uh, female role model that, uh, you know, you can talk to. Um, there are, you know, certain situations when it may get overwhelming. You know, for example, this pandemic has been really hard for a lot yeah. of people. Um, and I know that there were some, you know, it, so it may actually get overwhelming to handle, you know, uh, your home, you know, uh, however... Uh, much of a support you have and it's difficult for everybody right for men and women alike um, and I think in those cases if you have someone senior who's telling you you know what this too shall pass mm -hmm. you're strong you'll handle it I think that just gives a lot of confidence um, in my case I'm surrounded by a lot of people men and women who've been you know who support me support my aspirations and I think that really helps okay. so very nice to hear that perspective also <laughs> so do you have like a specific advice to women who wants to want to choose this as a career as to be a scientist or something like that? Um, it would go back to the point that you first made about being too shy to ask questions. Uh -huh. And I think that is one thing that we should really get rid of. If we're not shy and timid, um, you know, uh, that will really help. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for spending thank you. time with us. I think this would inspire people like to be a part of the science field or to come to IIC also. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks.